Uh, good evening, folks. Uh, Dr. Freedom here dropping in at you the last minute. Uh, yeah, I got up this morning and I didn't have time, you know, because I had to be off to work. And, both, and over the course of the day, I started hearing about this article in the mirror. And they're discussing, of course, the fact that apparently uh, Jody Whitaker, well, well, this is according, well, let's go to the article. Here's the one that's really started a bunch of heads exploding from here all the way out to Theta Centauri or wherever you live. All right. It says right here, Jody Whitaker removed from the cover of the Doctor Annual as she prepares to quit. Now, the annual cover is the first not to feature the current Time Lord in the show's 57-year history, despite Whitaker being in the show well into next year. All right, cover of the annual for 2022 will not, fe 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 oh, blah, blah, blah. will not feature a picture of the current Time Lord for the first time in the show's history. Artwork for the book has just been released and carries a graphic drawing of the TARDIS instead of the actress Jody Whittaker, who has appeared as the main image for the on the last three annuals. The decision to drop her comes as she prepares to depart the show after the next series, which is currently filming. But her exit is likely to be later than expected, with insiders saying she'll appear in two specials next year before regenerating into the 14th Doctor. Now, that's going to be kind of weird, and it also has... Now, here's the image that was released right here. And here's Colt Box's take on it. And the reason why we take this kind of seriously is because Nicola Methvin's been you know, more right than she has been wrong. Um, she's one of the very, 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 we're talking the list of authors from Mir is very short for those I will actually believe. Okay. So it's like that big and it's Nicola Methvin. All right. It's, like, <laughs> it's not a huge list. All right. But, so when she says stuff, chances are it's, it's going to happen. But here's my concern. If she's regenerating in two specials next year, is that all we're getting for next year? I'm really hoping not. Um, that would kind of worry me. But uh, you know, at the same time, it could be maybe that you like. Uh, oh, I don't want to butcher her name. Tania Miller, I believe, is it or Tania or whatever. She said that the Fourteenth Doctor has already, you know, way caught. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm glad. It's just I'm hoping that it's not the only two episodes we're getting next year, is my point. I'm very glad, you know, that this is true. You know, they're going to give her her due. Because look at what, you know, Capaldi had that huge thing, you know, that led up to his regeneration. You know, Matt, you know, Tennant and Smith had all that weirdness that led up to theirs. So I'm really glad she's you know, actually going to get a special. But my concern is, are they going to have more episodes than that? You see, I'm really hoping that this isn't a prelude to, you know, they're going to kiss off Doctor Who for next year. Especially after all the trouble they went through this year, you know, the, the film, you know, eight episodes, you know, to get out by autumn. Oh, hello, everybody who's popping in. How's everybody doing? Uh, it's just, it kind of boggles my mind. <laughs> but, no, I'm if this is true, I'm glad at least, yeah, she's going to be there at least till next year. It, all I know is this, there's a bunch of guys out there right now whose heads are exploding like that dude in Scanners. It's like, <laughs> you know, oh man, ugh. Somebody left the eggs in the microwave too long, you know, kind of effect. Oh, uh, but it's just kind of, you know, I'm just hoping there's more than two episodes, though. Or two specials, I mean. Yeah, I don't, yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, while I did enjoy most of that season, you know, Stephanie here just brought up. Uh, yeah, you know, come on, you only got like, was like four or five episodes that whole year. And it's like, well, but also the reason why they did that's because RTD requested it, you know, so that. He could, you know, make the transition a bit easier for the new team with Moffat and all to come in. And that's right. People are still telling that story about how David Tennant did it. And it's, he had nothing to do with it. Uh, 
Well, why would they, how could they have won? Because if this is true, Alistair, she's now done three seasons and she's getting two specials. That's kind of technically a fourth, ain't it? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's the way I look at it. She, she won the second they brought her in for the third se third, her third season. As far as I'm concerned, because it was so awful, so terrible, so mind-blowingly idiotically all that it, it was killing the show. Why would they bring her in for a totally you know, do do the whole three seasons? Also, if Doctor Who was in such dire straits, and I know I've been pounding this into you guys' heads, if Doctor Who was doing so terribly and it's so horrible and it's a ratings disaster and it's losing the BBC money, why are they even bothering to film eight episodes for next year or for this year? You see what I mean? If it was that terrible and it's horrible and it's you know a, such a waste of money and time, why would they bother shooting the eight episodes right in the middle of the COVID you know, restrictions? They could they had every excuse in the world to blow off Doctor Who till next year and they didn't. Unless there's a top secret plan. Dun dun dun. Oh look, see, I don't know. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um, word is they've already hired a new doctor, at least according to Tanea Miller. Well, if they treated her like they did with Colin Baker, she wouldn't have got two years. Remember, I think Colin Baker got a grand total of what was it, 18 months as a doctor, something along that line. Then they did, you know, they also did, because they did the hiatus thing right in the middle of his run. And then, you know, they kissed him off at, yeah, after a trial of a Time Lord. It's like, yeah, he wasn't actually physically there all that long because I think it was the yeah, I think it was a big eighteen month hiatus. It was a big hiatus right in the middle of his thing, remember? Oh god, I don't know, I just had flashbacks to Doctor in Distress. Oh. And please, you don't want to do that to yourself. Don't Google that. Whatever you do. It was kinda like USA for Africa on drugs. Alright, it was oh man. Well, I, you know, like I said, I, I'm glad all these stars came together. Sorry, I had an itch right here. And, uh, how's everybody doing? Okay, we got some more people coming in. Oh, Colin, I don't blame Colin for being ticked. And I'm hoping I'm going to get to meet him this year. Um, He's going to be guest starring at uh, Chicago TARDIS this year. Yeah, you see, every doctor has something you like if you can look for it, you know? Like I said, I like just about every doctor there was. That's why I don't like rating them or ranking them one over the other. Well, that's kind of your opinion, but you got to remember, so you know, every showrunner, and I'm talking about age NJD here, every showrunner has done a different thing. And the thing was, was this. They had to do something new. Okay. Well, like I said, I really hope it is hoping, uh, Trekopedia, or helping, I mean, Trekopedia. Um, also, you got to remember, like I said, a lot of people are freaking out over the ratings over on BBC America, and the problem is, I predicted that back where they decided to go to Sunday. It's um, Remember, BBC America, they air the show at a later time here in America, I think it's like 8 o'clock on Sunday, and when you go into that time region, you're going against a lot of, you know, you're going against Sunday Night Football, you're going against like you know all those big shows like Walking Dead stuff like that that's going on at that time. It it just was a bad move to put it on on Sunday, especially on BBC America, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but at the same time, it still did not too bad ratings over, you know, in the UK. You know, unlike you know Turd Turd Kodak and the rest of his gang have been shouting about. It, it's like I can't believe some of the nonsense I hear screaming out of some of these folks' mouths. You got Mecca Dum Dum, you know, Tard Kodak and, you know, Limp Sock and, you know, all the rest of them pretending like they're some kind of massive media experts. It, it just ticks me off when people get a bunch of subscribers and suddenly think that, well, I got this many thousand people behind me. I'm just glad for the people I got. Sheesh. Yeah. Oh, no. You looked. Oh, 
Send the decontamination squad to St. Max House. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, Samak, if I'm pronouncing it right, please let me know. You're, you're going to have to get a lobotomy. That's the only way you're going to recover from having seen the doctor in the stress video, okay? It's just, you're, you're never the same again. It, it's oh man, it's kind of like after the first time you've watched the Star Wars Holiday Variety Special. All right, you, you never recover from that. It's just... Yeah. Oh, I forgot about, yeah, yeah, the bowl movement. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> bowl streaks. You know, that, those guys, yeah. Like, I remember when, um, Phil, uh, reading about how when Philip Hinchcliffe was running the show, you know, that it, people were like, the show has gotten too dark and violent. Yet, look at some of the great episodes you got out of that era, like, you know, Pyramids of Mars and, oh man, uh, Image of the Fenda, all that kind of stuff around that time. Okay. Yep, exactly. I, I once had somebody yell at me for that because I was, you know, we were in a Zoom call. Or a whole, so I said, Dude, what? You're entitled to nothing. Enjoy what you have while you have it. Because someday, you know, like Lucy pulling the football from Charlie Brown, they're going to take it away. A lot of great points going on here tonight in the chat box. I'm, I'm, I'm loving what I'm reading here. <laughs> Glad I gave someone... Oh, well, like I said, um, I lo like rating doctors over one another, but Tom was my first doctor. Um, as I've told you all that boring story about how I discovered Doctor Who literally by accident because, you know, the... I'm not kidding. I, I, I heard he's even whining about he, I mean, everything that guy whines about. I swear, I bet he still sits back and thinks about his first prom date and, you know, gives it a review on video. I'm not sure. would be shocked. Then again, if he had a prom day, I don't know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. No. Okay. Um, okay. I mean, I'm reading along as we go here. I have not seen Loki yet. Okay. Trekopedia. Uh, I've not had a chance to watch it. Well, exactly. Um, these guys have are just practicing the ancient art of... They, they want you to feel. They don't want you to think. They want you to feel. So they, they put out this bad vibe canon or whatever it is to make you all angry about something that don't even exist. Doctor Who is no more political today than it has been over the last, oh, I don't know, 50-something years. Okay? <laughs> it's just, it just boggles my mind. Yeah, 58 years now coming up on. This November, it'll be. And they're like, oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. And I, trust me, I got into a debate online with a bunch of guys. I wish I could remember which podcast. Legend of the Traveling Tardis. Go subscribe to their YouTube channel. Um, uh, Yeah, I got into a debate with that. And I'm like, come on, what about... Well, they shouldn't do villains like Chris Noss guy. And I said, look, I don't think he was the best villain in the world. But they've done villains like that for since forever. I said, think about, you know, these white, evil, male businessmen. And I'm like, dude, did you forget about guys like, oh, I don't know, Stevens and the Green Death? That's just one that pops up in my head. Oh, gosh, yeah. Oh, I don't even want to begin discussing my opinions on the Star Wars sequels because I've pretty much made it known how I feel about them. Ugh. Okay, Black Widow, I'm not, I really don't care. The only reason they got everybody is demanding an origin story for um, Romanoff when we already know what it was. I'm sorry, they, they pretty much, how many here watched Peggy Carter? Dottie was basically Black Widow. They covered, if she came from the exact same training program, exact same setup, exact same, you know, whole deal, exact same setting. They covered all that right there in Peggy Carter. So now I don't want to watch a two-hour movie of that again. I already, I already know how it goes. The Russians were tra you know, training secret warrior women. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, they couldn't count their own rubles. Okay. Now, 
Yeah, that one's been going around a lot, Trekopedia, about Chris Marshall. The problem is, is like I said, we can't take that at face value because Chris Marshall allegedly had the role last time and it turned out to be Jodie Whittaker. And, but it turned out it was just sheer coincidence that he announced he was leaving Death in Paradise as, you know, Peter Capaldi, you know, within 48 hours of each other, Peter Capaldi announced he was leaving the role. And then, you know, he, and then Chris Marshall announces he's leaving Death in Paradise. So a lot of people assumed, you know, Chris Marshall was going to take the role. I've heard all kinds of wacky names and I, I hate going down. I really you know, I hate coming down on people, but it's like, it's the same thing. Richard Iote, what do you call it? Tilda Swinton. You're not going to get Tilda Swinton on no damn set in Wales. This lady, you know, is making multi-million dollar movies. Why would she go to Wales and make two, you know, not even 250K pounds for a year of work? Hell, she makes that just going to the bathroom on the set of a movie. It's like, why would she go, you know, to Wales? I, it's like, I hate having to remind people that there's a wish list, like I said, and then there's reality. Um, I can't remember who was up at the top of this. People are still screaming Phoebe Waller-Bridge, and it's like, why? You, she, you why would she do it? She's very successful in what she's doing right now. Why would she, you know, ditch her own show in her own right, all that, to go do somebody else's? Um, I'd love to see Chris Marshall as the doctor, because I loved him on Death in Paradise. Um, I even showed my friends on a Zoom call one night a couple of his scenes from the show, you know, a couple of clips, and that where he was very, very much like the Doctor. I would love it if they did it, but like I said, I highly doubt it. I would be shocked if it does turn out to be him. Oh, all right, all right. Okay, uh, you're always welcome. Yeah, you said thank you for the video, Strikeopedia. Like I said, I don't do this for money. That's like I said, I, I make more than enough money in my living as it is. Um, yeah, well, it could be anybody. You see, that's the trick, Samak, or Samak. Um, yeah, but she's not going to do a whole season. Somebody just said she did do a cameo, but she's not going to leave her multi-million dollar movie career to go do, you know, 10 months in Cardiff. Nobody wants to go to Cardiff. Not even the Welsh want to go to Cardiff. No. <laughs> I'm just joking because I have a friend of mine who lives near there. And <laughs> okay, yeah, Joe, yeah, Joe Martin's been speculated as well. And but the thing is, then you're oh, really going to have some weirdness going on, aren't you? I like I said, I enjoyed her performance as the Doctor as well. It was a mind bender. It was a mind racker. Matter of fact, yeah, a friend of mine came up with the explanation. How you know, A lot of people were speculating how could the TARDIS be in the form of a police box, you know, before, what do you call it, before, you know, Hartnell. And I said, it's very simple. Remember the TARDIS's inner being or whatever you want to call it. Remember Astrid, you know, she did that thing. Exists across all time and space. Or across time. So... Okay, uh, sorry, Heather. No, I have not watched Loki yet. Uh, I've been meaning to, and like I said, I just haven't gotten around to it. I just finished the uh, first season of Sweet Tooth. And if, I, if you get a chance, watch it. It starts off a wee bit slow, but it really picks up. It, like I said, I've really enjoyed that. We just finished the last episode of the first season today. Um, yeah, it ain't going to be Whoopi Goldberg either. Um, Whoopi is not going to leave her you know, big mansion and what you call it and you know, or whatever project. Plus she's doing, she'll be on Picard this season. And like I said, she's got a TV show and all that here. And she's not going to go do 10 months in Cardiff either. Okay. Do I think this, do, oh, hello, there's Philip. Do you think the two specials of Jody will finalize the timeless children arc? Who knows? You know, it's up in the air. It's like, they, they may even never bring it up again just to screw with you. There's all kinds of stuff like that running around in Doctor Who. They never tie off. Oh, yeah, good old Morbius, because that's that's where the whole... 
I, I actually had a guy who was going on saying about how, yeah, they had the Chibnall had to somehow fix the timeless children because putting doctors for Hartnell breaks the show. And I said, well, then the show should have ended back in 1976 with the brain of Morbius when they show, when you Hinchcliffe showcased the whole parade of doctors who came before Hartnell. You see, the thing is, folks, back in the day, yeah, it, it, I'm not kidding. Yeah, I, I loved it. I, like I said, I watched, yeah, I watched the first season. It was really good. I thought it was going to be one of those happy-go-lucky type of Disney deals, you know. Like, oh, great, it's Bambi, you know, with a little kid's face. But nope, it's got a good story to it. Yeah, more, I'm a more, let's see, the guy I want to see return more than anything is Omega. But I don't know if there's something going on with the guys who created the character or what. <laughs> what? <laughs> How do you know Philip steals underwear? Have you been watching him, Herbie? Well, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'd like to see Omega return. Oh, they have the Valyard. I don't know if they'd go there now. I don't know. The, like I keep telling these guys, uh, the only cannon I see is the one you're shooting yourself in the foot with because if you're trying to tell me you can establish a solid cannon on this show going back 58 years, I will tell you you're on drugs. I'm not kidding. It's... It's never going to happen. Yeah, you're not going to get Helena Bonham Carter on there either. Um, sorry, that's a little my little thing towards a Jeff Dunham joke there. Um, yeah, the uh, Web of Fear illustration. Oh, crap. I just saw this. Coming to August this year. If anybody has the date, please remind me. I just saw it not even a half hour ago. Now I can't remember. I just know it's in August. I think it's like August 11th. Let me know if you guys got it. Because uh, everybody's been wondering when that comes out. I can't remember the date off the top of my head. I just remember August of this year. Because uh, they finally announced, got off their butts and announced it. Appar or, now, some people claim to have seen some clips of it, and there's already complaints about the animation. Folks, be happy. Be happy you're getting these shows at all. The 16th? Okay, thank you. Knew it was somewhere in August. Yeah, so I'm really glad they did finally announce that, that that's going to be uh, happening. Uh, we've been wondering, you know, for a long, long time when they're going to finally get around to putting that out. Um, and, you know, now we're also wondering, you know, what's next? You know, there's a lot, you know, a lot of ground to cover in that era. You know, a lot of stuff that doesn't exist anymore on film or video. Um, we should just be thankful for what we're getting. It's like, well, I don't like the animation style. Well, then do it yourself. <laughs> well, if, if it was a good story, Bree, I'd love to see the Mara return also. Um, you know, I thought they were an interesting villain. Um, you know, from the dark places of the inside. But if you can find a way to do that. Okay, Philip thinks the animation seems more fluid. I haven't seen a clip of it yet. So I'm going to have to go find that and see if I, you know, see them for myself. Diet Root Beer. Local brand. I don't know if you ever heard of that. That's a local brand right here, I think, in Lima. It ain't too bad. Oh, hang on. I hate doing this on camera, guys, but we're live. <laughs> Oh, that was a big one. No. Um, <laughs> sorry, allergy season. Oh, yeah. The only one I didn't like on audio and I really couldn't stand it was Cradle of the Snake for the Mara on Big Finish. It just got too silly for me. That, well, I don't know if it's only two episodes, Austin. You see... We don't know that, and I was just speculating on the fact that I hope that that isn't the only two episodes we're getting. Yeah, 
Well, like I said, I'm not too sure on how that worked out. Um, like I said, to me, the Zygons have become a joke. But like I said, you don't hear me going on about it for days and days and days. Um, okay, it is the same team that was yeah, Fury of the Deep. Okay. And like I said, I've been enjoying these, you know, these um, new efforts, you know, bringing back the lost episodes. There, there's so much that, you know, we need to fill in, you know, that's so missing. Okay. Yeah. It took over the doctor. Yeah. Nissa, and I, I just didn't like it too silly for me. Kind of like silly. Like, you know, Eldrad must die. You know, that one was just way out there. <laughs> well, that's your opinion. You know, I'm not going to argue with you about it. The doctor's always been insecure and ill-defined. What do you think's kept him, uh, what do you call it, secret for all these years? There's these people always go, well, you know, it's like these people are going, well, we, I want to find out why the doctor left Gallifrey. They're never going to cover that. Um, because then it takes away from the mystery of the character. Well, like I said, uh, Stephen, um, if it had been anybody but Nicola Methvin who wrote the article, I'd say, well, I, I, I'll throw it, take it in my hand and mentally crush it and toss it in the, in the bin. Okay, why is the seed? I don't know. I quit watching Batwoman about, th th I, mean, I think I made it actually three quarters into the first season. I got towards the end. I got sick and tired of, uh, what was her name? Alice. It was just another cookie cutter Joker, you know, copy. And I, like I said, everybody's like how to do, it must be an insane villain or it can't be. I'm like, bull, sh bull crap. There's plenty of sane villains out there who can be just as sinister as the psychotic ones. And that's all Alice to me was. It was just a carbon copy Joker. And it's like you're trying to be, you're trying to have a female Joker, and it just didn't work. It's like there's plenty of sane villains that are just as scary, if you do them properly. Well, remember, um, if you've watched, uh, oh heck, um, Heaven Sent, he remember he told that his confession dial that creature that the the reason he left was bored was a lie. He left because he was afraid. Well, that's their opinion. Mistfall. Oh, goodness. Yeah, where they went back to Alzarius, I believe it was. Oh, uh, why go back there? There's nothing going on there. Even the Alzarians have left. Yeah, Jaws 4 ain't Jaws, but sorry, Jody's still the doctor. Haha. <laughs> okay. Very true. This, like I said, I, I, it's sadly, you know, we have all these armchair experts now, you know, who are telling you what to watch. And it's like, I'm not telling you what to watch. I'm just telling you what I think about it. Okay. <laughs> I love that one, Bree. Very good. And I'm sorry, but like I said, if you think that some guy's an expert because he did a five hour video saying about how much better he is than, you know, the current showrunner. Yeah, let's see him run a show. Matter of fact, write one script. Show it to me. I want to see it. I want to see the treatment. I want to see the synopsis. <laughs> but of course they never do. Because those who can't do, bitch. <laughs> yeah. No, he tells it like he thinks it is. It's an opinion piece. Sorry, I'm just replying to Austin here. He seems awfully excited. Dude, Tard Kotick knows about as much about television as, oh, I don't know, maybe that roadkill raccoon I scraped off the pavement a couple of weeks ago. You know, it does. Sorry. It, he, he obviously don't know a thing about ratings, how they're handled. 
or anything like that. He was sitting there after Series 11 on a podcast with me talking about how the ratings had fallen and the average ratings had gone up by two and a half million. So, no, I wouldn't count on Jenna Coleman coming back. Sorry, uh, she's gone on to do many, many other things. Like I said, I have nothing against her as an actress. Matter of fact, Jenna Coleman's going to be playing um, Joanna Constantine in the upcoming Neil Gaiman Game, Game thing for Netflix. She's going to be playing the uh, great-great-grandmother of uh, John Constantine. So she's not coming back. She's no way. I don't think so. Pyramids of Mars, yeah, good episode. I agree with you there. Got me with that one. I love that one. Well, yeah, I, I, that's why I, I agree with you, Mike. I think what's going on is, yeah, they're, they've already, you know, decided, you know, we might as well bring in a new um, team. We're going to be bringing in a new doctor next year. You know, what do we do? Plus, apparently they're claiming they were experimenting with the idea of doing, you know, a non-doctor cover. And it's like, dude, why break tradition for after how many years? You know, just, ugh. I agree with you. No more, Clara. <laughs> Sorry, I got better things to do with five hours of my time, like straightening my wires and, I don't know, petting my cat, uh, pulling out my nose hairs with tweezers. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, uh, Hang out. We're... All right, so how's everybody doing tonight? Okay, we're up to 46 people. Hello, everybody out there. This is running a bit longer than I thought I actually was going to. <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, somebody said last night they want Gall Lady Gallifrey to do more videos. Ah, uh, what I don't think I saw him in here tonight, but it's it's in the chat replay for last night. The little video I did, yeah, the live I did last night. Wait a minute, what are you doing in here? This is the Doctor Freedom Show. Get out. I don't care. Ugh. Don't make me grab a cat and throw it at you. I yeah. know how to. No, no, that's animal abuse. We don't do hey. that. That'll get you canceled. <laughs> No, that'll get you canceled. I ain't even started mine yet. Don't make me have Herman make you leave the room. Baby Yoda, kick her out of here. Give her the bait magic hand thing. Herman needs new clothes. I know. We're, her poor Herman, he's been wearing the same shirt now for a few months. because of. Well, I uh, haven't had a chance to change him since last October. He doesn't need new clothes. He's a skeleton. He needs new clothes. He needs to cover up those damn feet. Next thing you know, you're going to be trying to clothe the worm. Sheesh. Don't tempt me. <laughs> Because I'm sure I can find a diaper somewhere to put on him. I'm not kidding. We're, we're, I've been trying to find a decent fake cigarette for the worm, but oh well. Um, you got to leave your computer room first. Mike says we want Lady G. <laughs> Lady Gallifrey rules. Please more videos. Trekopedia says. <laughs> Get out. This is my show. Hi. <laughs> Oh, we got two cats, Heather, by the way. We got Oreo, who's five. We got Sophie, who's ten. Well, going on eleven, actually. She's, She's 11. eleven now, yeah. Hey, are you going to get up here, Soph? Let's see. I don't know if you can see her there. You might see her head. All right, there we go. Hi, Sophie. Sophie's my eleven-year-old. Bree says, poor Herman. <laughs> yeah, this is Sophie, my eleven-year-old. Yeah, we don't have to wear masks no more, so I think it's time to take their masks off of them. Yeah, we do. Maybe they got, yeah, did we get them vaccinated? Yeah. Uh, I don't know where they could have shot poor Herman at, but oh, well. Uh, well, like I said, you, you had to give her a chance and all that. It, it's the same with every doctor who comes in there. Philip says he misses that voice. Philip, it's Philip. 
Come here, Philip. You haven't forgotten Philip already. <laughs> Don't even get me started. <laughs> oh. What, Soph? I don't have my glasses on, so I can't read the comments right now. Oh. No, it freaks me out when I'm sitting in here and you'll, I'll be doing something. All of a sudden, I get patted on the arm. And it's either Sophie up here on the footstool or it's Oreo standing on the ground reaching up. Because he can stand that tall, that little bugger. You know. Ugh. I know, that kind of worried me they made Picard a synth. For you folks who really have played Fallout 4. Um, or, you know, Picard's basically a synthetic now. I'm like, what the heck? How are you going to explain that? Did I um, hear you guys talk about Batwoman a little bit ago? Yeah. Oh, that, that show, I quit watching that because it turned out to be sucky. I know, like I said, it just, bleh. Mike, how could you forget Philip? Will Big Finish do time? I don't know. I have no idea. I've not heard anything about the more time war from... Big finish or not. Well, originally when Matt Smith got hired, I was sitting there and they, they were showing these pictures of him. And I'm like, my God, it's Frankenstein's kid. Look at that head. Oh, my 26. No way. But like I, I have to say, you know, as much as I pick on Matt Smith, by, by the end of the, well, by the middle or not even halfway to the, the 11th hour, you know, he had me. He was, you know, he was a really, he's a really good actor when he wants to be. Now they're saying they just fixed his heart problem. Oh my God. I wouldn't know because I didn't watch Gotham. Um, one of the things I can't stand more than anything on planet earth, prequel series, it's like there are so many things out there to explore you know, in the current timelines of things. And we're like, you know, as far as I'm turned, folks, um, as, as some of you will already know, um, Gotham, I called it Batman Not Included. And Krypton, I called it Superman Not Included. And it's like, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay, good night. Like I said, we'll, if you, we won't be too far behind you because I'm going to log out here in a few minutes. Um, like I said, I heard it, you know, it was okay and all that. Like I said, I just, I don't like prequel series. I just can't get over it. You know, especially like, you know, Starship Dysentery. You know, it's like, I, I can't really go on about it because I didn't watch it. I knew it was going to be another Abrams series. And it's like, I knew exactly what they were going to do, putting it that close to the Kirk Spock era. You know, right, you know, I knew exactly what was going to happen. Sure enough, they did everything I said they were going to do. Now, I'm not going to hate you for it. Like I said, the, the problem with the Star Wars prequels is I sat there I sat there and finally I got to the part I liked it was probably about the last half hour of Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, I tried to watch Krypton and I just couldn't get into it. Gotham, I was going to try, but I'm like, why? Because sooner or later, you're going to run out of villains to do backstories for. It's like, that's all it basically was from what I heard. Oh, well, this week we're going to find out the backstory of the Penguin, backstory of the Joker, backstory... And then we're going to go on and on and on about that. I go, yeah, until finally Batman shows up at the end. Um, I know Lady G's been watching Superman and Lois. I couldn't get into it. I, I really tried. Um, I just couldn't get into it. Not my bag. But gets better as it goes on. I'm sorry, but I don't want to see old Tim talking about his poor kids. One's got powers, the other ain't got them. And of course, the one who's got the powers is an emo. Oy vey. Uh, Smallville, I did not watch. I'm, I'm not going to, like I said, I don't like prequel series. I generally just don't you bother with them. Stargirl, yeah, somebody just brought that up. Uh, I like Stargirl. 
It turned out to be far, far better than I thought it was going to be. Like I said, I walked into it thinking, okay, let's see where they go with this. And I was pretty amazed, I gotta admit. Oh my gosh, I, I, that doesn't happen. I got a super chat. Oh, okay. I, I talked about your channel tonight, Kristen. Yeah. Um, but okay. You've got a show on tomorrow at six o'clock uh, Eastern time, if I remember right, uh, that you're going to be um, interviewing the um, Mr. Woodward, which is the author of um, one of the few American authors for Big Finish. We just talked about this story last week. And that, of course, was on a non blanking. I can't believe it. I just did, I just did that. Oh, it was the Juggernauts. So if you get a chance, turn that on tomorrow. They'll be live at about 6 p.m. Eastern time. Also, as I said earlier, they have a YouTube channel. Go subscribe. Yeah. The coolest part is uh, Tom Welling, who played Superman in that episode, turned um, he played the role of Kane and Lucifer a season or two back. And he did an amazing job at that. Yeah, like I said, I couldn't get into it, Philip. I, I really tried. I just, not my bag. Yeah, it's just we've seen so many versions now of Clark Kent growing up. Oh, God. It, well, at least it wasn't like Man of Steel. He was also a crab fisherman. Oh, my God. Doesn't that amaze you guys? Have anyone here ever watched, like, you know, that, uh, what series was that? With a, oh, De Deadliest Catch. What just amazes me is you got a bunch of sailors out there who actually like getting crabs. It's just amazing. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, he was very, very good in Lucifer as Cain. I enjoyed him in that role. How many here watching Lucifer? Yeah, I watched the latest season. Uh, awesome. Okay, guys. Well, it's 8 o'clock. I have to be up at 4 a.m. once again to go to work. So, please, everyone, take care of yourselves. COVID's still out there. You know, it, like I said, stay safe, stay sanitized. Uh, like I said, me, if you get a chance, I got the one-shot vaccination. I, I had no side effects from it. At least me personally, I didn't. Um... They'll bring you in there. They give you the jab. They make you wait 15 minutes to make sure your head's still clear. You know, make sure you're not having any weird effects. And then they let you go after that. And like I said, we blew in and out of there. We were in and out of there in under a half hour. And it was very much worth it. We got the one shot. And, you know, like I said, I've had no ill effects. So heck, I didn't, my arm didn't even get sore or anything. And I've had booster shots in the past, you know, and... My arm will get real sore, you know, kind of like when you get bit by a wasp. But no, I didn't get that at all with this shot. And I was kind of worried because in the past, when I got, you know, shots like the flu shot and all that, I always wound up getting the flu. This case, nope. Fine and dandy. <laughs> so take care, everyone. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming in here tonight. Um, it, it's great to see you all out there and, you know, Doctor Who land. And please keep an open mind. Always do. You know, try to keep an open mind. So take it easy, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you all for coming.